uh, porifera, fallible sponges. It's called porifera because the body is composed of pores. It has two layers, uh, one on the outside for protection and inside layer uh, that's used for to aid in, in, in digestion. It contains the collar cells. Now the inside collar cells, and this picture is on page 706 in your book, the inside collar cells have little tiny flagella that oscillate and move back and forth that brings water in and out of the, of the, of the, of the sponge. Water comes in through the opening at the top called the osculum. It also comes in through the sides, through the pores and the openings of the side of the body cavity, the body wall. Hence the name porifera because of the pores. So we got water coming in into the body cavity of the sponge and then going out through the osculum. <clears throat> and these flagella help bring water and food nutrients in and out of that, of that cell, of that sponge. Uh, Realize that the sponge is uh, sessile, which means he doesn't move. He's permanently attached to the bottom. Uh, he has, uh, uh, he's a detritus eater or filter feeder. He, whatever comes in through the pores or through the osculum in the water, he will eat that decaying organic material that he, that's brought in. So uh, he doesn't have a digestive system, but rather this detritus material, organic material, enters specific cells, and those cells break down uh, the food material and integral respiration. So he doesn't have <clears throat> a true nervous, a digestive system yet. We won't see that until the next time. Uh, then we see how the uh, peripheral responds to the environment. Realize that they don't have a nervous system, uh, but they do have uh, uh, special cells within the body wall uh, the flagella cell, the collar cell flagella is, is one thing that helps move, but inside there they also have uh, archaeocytes, which are little amoeba shaped cells in the inner wall that do several different things. They help with uh, reproduction, they help in digestion of some of the food. They also produce these little triangular fibrous materials called spicules. And spicules kind of act like the skeletal system for the sponge. They keep the sponge. Uh, in an upright position, so to speak. Um, and then, of course, the outside water is the, outside wall is the epidermis for protection. But these archaeocytes are there for digestion, reproduction, and excretion, and to produce the spicules. Uh, like I said, m uh, sponges are non mobile They are uh, sessile, permanently attached to the bottom. Now, realize they do not have a nervous system. It's one of the questions we have today, what type of nervous system they have. They don't have a nervous system. But they do react to touch, but this is a more of a sensory response rather than a true nervous system. A response to touch, if we touch them, the pores will squeeze shut and so on, or certain chemicals cause them to react in a very certain way. But it's not a true a re, uh, nervous system yet. Reproduction is asexual by fragmentation or budding. They can do either of the two. They can also reproduce sexually. As we said earlier, they are hermaphroditic, which means they contain both male and female are reproductive glands and can produce those sperm and egg. Although they're capable, capable of producing both sperm and egg, they do not fertilize themselves. Rather, the male releases the sperm into the water and of different sponges and the sperm will travel through the waters until it's brought into a different sponge and thereby that sperm will fertilize that available egg in that sponge. So we still have cross-fertilization ensuring a amount of genetic variability between the different species of sponges. <coughs> As I said, sponges can also reproduce by budding, in which they use sponge just grows out of the side of the old one, breaks off and settles to the bottom. Uh, they can also uh, reproduce or produce gemmules, which are little protective capsules that will allow that sponge to survive under harsh conditions, it's too dry or whatever, and then when the conditions get right again, uh, why the sponge will break out of that gemule and, and regenerate the form of the sponge. Uh, so once the, uh, during, during reproduction, once the eggs are fertilized, uh, the, the uh, zygote develops into a larva. The larva contains a flagella or several flagella and he will swim around. Uh, this is the only time in the life cycle of the sponge that he is not uh, sessile. This one is a flagellated larva. Uh, that Life cycle is in your book on page 708. 
<clears throat> shows you the life cycle of the sponge reproduction. So take a look at that and get familiar with how the sponge reproduces there. Uh, and then two, take a look on page 709 at the uh, uh, jellyfish or the sponges ecology. It talks about the beneficial uses of sponges to humans. Uh, and some of the things we do with medicine and, and medicinal things and the less curing cancer and so on. So make sure you take a look at that. Next, we look at the, the last phylum was the phylum Nidaria. And this phylum is named Nidaria because of the uh, nidocytes, the special stinging cells that we find in the tentacles. And the stinging cells give it its name, Nidarians. Now, this picture, the picture for you on page 17, and there's a drawing there of the nidocytes on page 17 with these special curled up barb on the inside of it called the nematocysts. Uh, these are held in place under extreme pressure generated by osmotic water pressure. Uh, more than 20 times the pressure that we find in a bicycle with inner tube. These, these are that much pressure on the walls of whatever they're going to attack. So as they, as they are ejected by some, something touching them, causing them to release this bark, it enters this prey and releases poison, killing it, and then they can bring it up into the body to be digested. 